Hey everybody, it's 1240 on uh, Monday. Did you hear that? Look, it's quiet. My kids are in school. I love Mondays. <laughs> it's great. Um, and my living room is clean. So see, I cleaned it and then it stays clean until three o'clock when they get home and then it gets dirty again. It's like a tornado comes through my house within five minutes it's like it was never even clean so this week I decided you know what it's time to um, get people back in my life that can help me make my life easier because time is money right so I think is it worth me spending five hours to clean my house and that's five hours like that's a full-on clean to do my whole house is it worth it to do five hours and lose that time where I could be spending it with either my children or I could be working and making money and I choose to pay somebody. So this week I'm excited. That was a goal I set. I have now rehired my friend Gerda to come and clean my house again. She used to clean my house years ago and she did such an amazing job. Hi Shannon. Hi Jordana. Hi Diane. Um, so... I'm excited that I have somebody to clean my toilets for me again. My kids have been doing it and they've been doing a great job, but you know, it's always nice to have somebody do it properly and you know, not that they don't, but they're young, right? And they complain, but whatever. And uh, so anyways, today is, the, uh, it's, it's a good day. I'm doing food prep. I'm getting tons of work done. I'm doing legs, leg, leg day, and I'm doing food prep. And my dog's got some pretty cool treats that I got at the St. George Apple Fest yesterday. So I just want to show you some of the food prep that I'm doing today. I'm going to flip you around. Okay, in my ActiFry, which this is like a love-hate relationship I have with this thing because this is my third one in less than two years and I keep buying them and I don't know why. I mean, they replace them. They have a good warranty system, but they do not like sweet potatoes. That's what I have in here right now. So this thing... That's supposed to be in here mixing it up doesn't want to work when when I have it in there because I think because the sweet potatoes get so heavy I love these things I could eat them all day long it's my favorite so here I've got some cooling I keep them in the fridge and that's part of my healthy carbs and then I have my um, ground turkey that I did did up and then I have my chicken is in the oven and then I'm just, right now, I'm just doing my turkey. So I mix my turkey up. So in here I have, um, I think, three cans of turkey. I've got some plain Greek yogurt, some cucumber, balsamic vinegar, a little bit of mustard, some Mrs. Dash, some pepper. And um, I should probably put that in the fridge. So I'm just going to put that in the fridge. And my fridge is really full right now. Oh, my goodness. I don't know if I'm going to find room. Um, and then I've got, see all that? That's all the fish I cooked the other day. And now I just have to package that up. So I'm going to be good after. Oh, geez. That's probably going to fall. After. No, it's good. It's safe. It's going to be great. So after I cook everything and it's cooled, not too cool, but it's cooled enough that it's not, like, still steaming from cooking, I measure it all. On my handy dandy little scale. I actually not a fan of this one. It's just a cheap one I got at Walmart. I gotta get a better one. Um, when I get my thermo mix, it, it will also be my my scale. Um, but anyway, so I'm going to put those all in their baggies, stick it in the freezer, and then I'm for food prep for meat and fish, that's enough that's gonna last me probably the next two to three weeks. So I'm good. Cause now uh uh, Sean's decided he's going to start eating how I eat and and I said well if you're gonna eat healthy you need to do your own food prep because I do my own so <laughs> so I did do a little bit extra there for him anyways um what else is going on I have to show you okay so I've always wanted to have a home gym and I was blessed enough to find this thing on Kijiji, my, all my weights and everything, and I got a really smoking awesome deal on it. So just recently, I've started looking for equipment 
right? Like cardio equipment because I suck in the winter time. I fall. I'm clumsy. I cannot run or bike outside because if there's even a little bit of ice, I will find it and I will wipe out. That's just how it goes. And I don't want to injure myself, but I still want to do hardcore cardio. So I've been searching for a few months. I'm kind of aware of what all the prices are and everything like that. Hey, Summer, Elanda, Rosemary, everybody's on here. Um, so I started looking and I found the most amazing bike and treadmill that I've now incorporated. And I have to tell you, I keep talking about this abundance thing. For less than $2,000, I have been able to now have an entire home gym. There's probably only one or two more pieces that I want to get and I will find. I'm not ready for them yet, so that's why I haven't gotten them and they haven't presented themselves. But I'm telling you, when you want something bad enough, you will find a way to do it, right? And you'll find a way to do it in the way that's right, that doesn't strain you because I don't want to use credit. I like to save my money. I like to pay for things. I don't want to be in debt. I see a lot of my friends um, or people that I know buying things that they can't afford, living in homes that they can't afford and if somebody loses their jobs they don't know what they're going to do so I've always practiced in the way that my parents taught me that was to save work hard and then you know buy things that buy things that are in your budget and and when you work really hard life's abundance and everything will come to you and so this house that I live in to some might be like oh she lives in this old house that was built in the 1870s and it's like old right okay this see this wall that to me is gorgeous that is I I would build a house that looks like that I have no interest in living in a brand new house I love the house I live in actually when I was young you know we envision things that we want for the future right um, car you're going to drive, house you're going to live in. The house that I envisioned myself living in was a yellow brick, yellow brick, old farmhouse, two-story old farmhouse. What do you think I live in right now? And that story, that is a story for another day as well because that was just amazing. But um, I love my old house. It's, a, it's an old century home. The bones were amazing. Gutted the whole thing, rented the whole thing. Now, don't get me wrong, it needs some work still. But um, it's it's amazing. When we bought it, 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 it was in really bad shape. And we put some love and care into it. And it's, yeah, thank you. You love old homes, Rose. Um, I do. I, I've always been drawn to the older homes. So, you know, new homes, if that's what you love, that's great. That is not for me. So, anyways, I'm going to show you my bike. Tour de France bike. O-M-G. So amazing. So it's a little dirty. I used it for the first time today. I've got, so I have my Kleenex box because my nose always runs and my towel to wipe my sweat, but I've got the screen. It can hook up to the internet. I can um, do, I, I actually this morning, I did the probably the hardest workout on this thing I have ever done on a bike. Mary, you would be proud. My trainer, Mary Dinner. I keep in fit. Check them out. <laughs> um... But yeah, the this bike is just incredible. So I did like, I don't know, I picked, I don't know what I was doing. It was like 5.30 in the morning. I picked the Tour de France thing. For 45 minutes, I was going uphill, downhill. And this thing moves. So like as I'm biking, it's showing me the trail. And the bike actually lifts up and then it lifts down and goes up and down and up and down like that. And it feels like you're actually on a hill, going up a hill, down a hill. It intensifies or not and... Oh my gosh, I just cranked the music and I went. I opened the back door to let the cold air in because I was just sweating like a crazy person. Um, I have another toy. I'll show you another day. That's my treadmill. It's amazing. I'm going to wait. It's actually still outside. <laughs> I've had it now here for like, I don't know, four days or something like that. And so I went for my first run on it yesterday outside in my backyard. <laughs> Because I wanted to use it so bad and try it out. So I want to show you today I'm doing legs. I'm just setting you up here. Hello. So part of legs is uh, I do squats. I don't know if this is the right thing. So we got a photo shoot happening in like, I don't know, five days, six days, seven days. Sunday. Sunday. Today is uh, Monday. So however many days that is. I can't think. I'm just so excited. 
So today I'm doing legs. So I did my bike ride, which like was crazy. Hardest one I think I've ever, ever done um, in my life. Not just since my fitness journey, but in my life. And now I'm doing legs. So, you know, I was chatting with Mary this morning, trying to find a plan of action because for me, my upper body has really developed quickly and um, is really strong and muscular, but my lower half, that's, that's still an area that I need to work on for competition, right? Um, so I've pretty much lost all the weight that I need to lose. I'm just now tightening, toning, and building muscle, which I have to tell you, this entire process is really amazing. It's very interesting to me, and I'm actually, I love watching my body transform. So this is part of why I'm coming on here today, because this for me is also like my online album. It's my memory book, right? So I'm going to be able to go back and look at these videos as my body's transforming even more so for competitions and um, just see how it's transformed. So like this is the first time in my life I've ever had abs. <laughs> People ask me all the time, what do you do to get your abs? Um, it literally is everything I'm doing in the kitchen. Don't get me wrong. I do ab exercises, but really more than anything, it's what I'm putting in my mouth. And I have pretty much completely cut out sugar. The only sugar I get is in this piece of gum, um, in, in like blueberries is the only fruit I'm eating right now. I love blueberries. I have them every other morning with my pancakes. I have a hundred grams of blueberries. Um, if I want a sweetener, then I use stevia in my coffee. Um, uh, what else that you know and, and any vegetable I have like if there's a natural sugar in that that's it I do not add sugar to anything cutting sugar out is huge because especially for men you know for men if you've got that they call it the beer belly or whatever you know that is the bigger it is the higher at risk you are for heart disease and all this stuff like intestinal problems and um, so for women we usually would gain it more so in our hips and our butt and our thighs and that kind of stuff but for men they get it here but I'll tell you like I that runs in my family where the women have a bit of a belly and there is diabetes in my family so I do like to watch sugar and all that kind of stuff so I I've actually cut that right out and I've noticed a huge difference but what I'm see I can't even get far enough so you can kind of see what I'm doing squat wise but I went to see, um, I went to train with Mary's train, one of Mary's trainers. His name's Craig from Lil's Gym in Kitchener. So if you saw me pulling her on that metal thing uh, last week and we did some boxing, that was at Lil's Gym in uh, Kitchener. And Craig was awesome. He, he, he's really big on form. I mean, so is Mary, but it's neat to hear how different people do uh, different things, right? Because you can always learn and um, we love to learn. That's why she brought me there. But, uh, so one of the things that we did was squatting. So you can't see my feet right now, but um, my feet are just, they're, they're hip width apart and they're straight on. And I actually, my running shoes, <laughs> look, I got this shirt. My running shoes here, these are like weight training shoes. So they don't really have a thick sole. They're not really meant to do cardio because I'm not doing cardio right now. Um, but I, that's, these are the shoes that I wear when I'm doing my weight training specifically. So they've got good support and they feel really good on my feet, but I've got, uh, what is this? 25 pounds. So when I'm squatting, the thing I want to remember is you want to, you know, suck in your abs, keep your core tight. When you come down and you squat, you don't want to just come up and then like, you know, squeeze it here. You want to go down and you want to squeeze right now, squeeze up and then squeeze out. So I have really no butt. I mean, that's one thing I've always wanted that I'm working towards, but when I come down, see, if you come up and you just squeeze here. Look, I'm showing you my butt on Facebook. I don't know if this is a... <laughs> this is pretty crazy. Anyways, but when you come down, right? So right here I start squeezing and then I come up and I squeeze. So when you do that, you're actually working the muscle harder. It's more concentrated and it will develop a lot quicker. So when I typically do legs or any muscle group for that matter, I will do three to four exercises on that muscle group. So I'll do three sets um, of however many reps. Usually, I just gotta turn this off so it doesn't burn. You, oh, see, I burn everything. Ay, ay, ay. That's okay, it's all good. Let's put a little bit of put a little bit of hot sauce on there, it'll be fine. 
Uh, but I do, um, I typically will do three sets of 15 reps of whatever, right? And if I've increased my weight, which what, now I'm increasing my weight, um, I'll, I might t even do less reps, like I might do, or not less reps, but instead of 15, I'll do, you know, 12. Sometimes I even do military, where I'm doing 12, 10, 8, and you, you do it continuously, and that's hard. I mean, sometimes I have to do <laughs> classic Burford recipe. Hi, Patrick. <laughs> uh, we were at Dan. I see Dan's on. We were at his Buck and Doe this weekend. It was awesome, by the way. I had a fantastic time, but I was trying to teach all the boys how to do some line dancing. You Branford Tonians, this Burford girl, dancing, trying to teach us some country moves. Anyways, we'll have to do it again soon. It was fun. Not the wedding part, I mean the dancing part. <laughs> but um, yeah, with the weights, I, I will also do the military style, and I really like that because it works the muscle super, super hard, and it's super concentrated. So sometimes I get to where I'm doing like 12, 10, 5, and by the time you get to 5 pounds, that 5 pounds feels like it weighs 100, and um, just because of the way that I'm lifting. So that's pretty cool to be able to do that. But with legs, because it's such a huge muscle group, I've now worked up to the point where I'm I'm doing every muscle group twice a week just because I'm trying to build, right? So um, with legs, because it's such a huge muscle group, I will do more than that. I'll do probably more like, um, I don't know, five, five, six, sometimes seven different exercises for uh for legs because I'm doing legs and butt right um, and I'm gonna have a butt if I if it kills me I'm gonna have a butt but I do a lot of squats a lot of step ups uh, biking is great as long as you're doing it right you know if you're pushing from the heel and you're really working your working your butt um, doing glutes uh, lots of lunges um, on my machine here I'll show you hang on on my machine here I've got my cable Right, so I've got, I'll put my, my strap here that, I, that I've got around my ankle. And then I can literally just do, you can see me in the mirror here, where I'm doing my pullbacks or out to the side, where I'm doing those kinds of things. So that's working the muscle in a different way. And then when I go to Mary's, she kills me even more. But I, you know what, I have to say, a lot of people hate leg day. I love leg day. If you do leg day and you can still walk, you haven't done it right. <laughs> <laughs> when I do leg day with Mary, I am literally crawling from one machine to the next. Um, and, and that is by choice. <laughs> I've gotten to that point where, you know, I work, I give 125% or more when I'm at her studio because I think I'm paying to be there and I am working hard and I'm not going to give up. And I, I've had such amazing results because of that. So the boys from the weekend, my muscles were bigger than yours. You might have been able to hold that weight out longer than me, but I was tired. I'm just saying that I was tired. <laughs> um, they had a competition where you could win a case of beer. I mean, I didn't want the case of beer. I didn't care about that. I just wanted to beat them, and I didn't. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna practice. I should do that. Hang on, hang on. I don't know how much that weight was. I think it was. 15 or 17 pounds. Here's a 10 pounder. Let's see how long I can hold it up for. But anyway, so you just, we held it up and then somebody won a case of beer. I don't even know who won the case of beer, but you can hold it out. Um, so I can't talk and do this at the same time. <laughs> I just can't do it. Uh, but anyways, yeah. So working muscle groups twice a week now, it, it's been awesome. But when I did legs with Mary last week, um, I was working out with Brandy right? Because we're on the same schedule and just the way the schedule has been, um, we've been working at t in the morning together at 6 a.m. And we were doing, uh, Mary got a new machine, a Smith machine, which is amazing because you can work the muscle even better and be even more concentrated with it, even more so than just doing uh, like squats with, a, with a, a bar. And so we were doing the Smith and then we come over onto the stepper and do some high intensity training. And I tell you, like, by the end of it, I we were crawling, and I said, please don't put this on Facebook. But maybe she should have, just to show people, like, how hard, you know, it, we're working and how hard it is. But it's because we chose to do that. So 
she's got some clients that go see her and really their goal is like when I started with her I just wanted to feel and look strong um, she asked me what my goal was and it was I wanted to do 20 push-ups unassisted 20 pull-ups unassisted and just feel more energetic and feel and look strong and that has definitely happened I can't do all the pull-ups yet I can do the push-ups but I'm working towards doing the pull-ups. I mean, they're they're very challenging. So I can do that with a band, but I want to do it unassisted. I want to be able just to do it with just my natural mus muscle, right? Um, and she's got clients that go in there because, you know, everybody's got their own reason. They just want to feel better. Maybe they want to do a competition. So as I started working out with her, I realized that that was something that has always been on my bucket list that I've always wanted to do, but I never believed I could do it. And then, you know, when you finally have somebody that knows what they're doing and can teach you how to do it and support you in the right way, it makes the world of difference. All you have to do is ask for help. That's a very good lesson. Ask for help. And that's hard for people because I think when you ask somebody for help, you sometimes that affects your ego more than anything, right? And you maybe feel like asking for help makes you weak. But in reality, I look at people when they ask for help, I think it makes them a stronger person and it takes a lot of strength to ask for help in whatever capacity that is in your life. It could be anything. Um, so... If you feel weak because you need help and you're afraid to ask for help, I think you're maybe just not, um, your doors will be closed and windows will be closed for you. The more help you ask for, the more things will come to you. You'll be presented with people that have the tools that will be able to guide you and help you in whatever you need. Um, thank you for the hearts, by the way, because, you know, that's, that's a big one. I know, especially for men, um, Ego is a big thing for men. It is for women too, but I know men really struggle with um, with the ego part of it, you know? like, And that comes down to like, men don't cry. Um, men don't want to ask for help uh, because it it's hard on their ego. And I know some of the men in my family, that's, that's what they've said to me. But as soon as they've started asking for help, how amazing your life becomes, right? So don't be afraid to ask for help in whatever capacity that is. The other thing I've learned on the other flip side of that, because now I do have a lot of people coming to me and asking for help because they see that I, you know, whether it's an exercise, whether it's in business, I used to just do everything for everybody because I wanted to help everybody. And I thought that was great. But in reality, that, that always wasn't always helpful and it really wasn't always helpful to me or to, fair to my family. So I have learned to say no. I've learned that when someone comes to me for help, I do help when I can, as often as I can, but I also would rather give you the tools that you need so that you can help yourself. Because if you just have somebody that's always doing something for you, that doesn't benefit you either. So if somebody's looking for something, so for example, in my organization, in my Young Living Essential Oil business, if I have a teammate that's looking for something or asking for something, and we have a tool available within our group for them to utilize, then I show them and teach them how to use that tool. So that takes a little bit of time to do that, but then they know where to go and they know how to get it. So the next time they need help, they're not gonna come to me, they're gonna know where to go. Then when they have somebody in their organization that needs help, they're gonna be able to teach them the same thing. So that's really awesome that we're able to teach people um, where to go and how to do it and we have those tools available to us in our business and, and in life too you know with my kids we have this rule where I say it's the five minute rule with people in my organization it's the ten minute rule so with my children I say you know if you have a question for me what I want you to do or you're looking for something that's a great example they're looking for a piece of clothing or they're looking for a toy they have to look for at least five minutes and in that five minutes, if they can't find the answer to their question or they can't find the toy or whatever it is that they're looking for, then they can come bug me about it. Because you can just imagine if I had four kids coming to me all the time, wanting everything and wanting me to do everything for them, that's not good for them either because then they don't become uh, strong and independent. They're always relying on me for everything and I don't want that for them. My parents did this with us. You know, I remember when Mike and I were younger, um, with my parents working on the farm, they they were they were right there, but 
often Mike and I were having to cook our own meals, um, make our own breakfast, make our own lunches for school, get dressed, do our own laundry, bathe ourselves, you know, at young at a young age where, you know, I look at I look at the generation now and a lot of the parents are doing everything for their kids, even their kids that are in their 20s and 30s are still living at home. I'm sorry if I'm offending anybody that still lives at home. There's a time and a place for that, but I mean, I moved out when I was 19 and I owned my first home at the age of 19. Um so <laughs> Debbie. Hey Tracy. Uh hey Annette. So yeah, so we have the five minute rule, right? So it's, they look, they try to figure it out on their own. If they can't, then they come and bug me. In my organization, this is extremely exciting. Another amazing thing happened last night where my organization officially hit 800 people and then five minutes later it hit 801 and it might actually even be more now. So before I know it, I'm gonna have a thousand people in my organization loving and using oils just like I do and that's just that's a huge huge thing my so a couple weeks ago my business broke out into another country now my organization is growing in numbers and it's just so amazing abundance is everywhere right um, so you can just imagine if I had 800 people coming to me asking me questions there is no way I would even be able to function so 10 minutes take 10 minutes to look for what you need there, there's information everywhere, all over the internet, all over if you're a sprucer, in our website, on our Facebook group. Those things that we have access to for us, specifically as sprucers, go and look. In the meantime, as you're looking, the other thing that's cool about this is you start to learn more information. You start to look and see more things that you didn't even know existed, maybe weren't even aware were there, and you're going to learn more. So... That's a good one for you parents, five minute rule. And so just so you know, my six year old is capable of doing this, okay? So my kids are six, seven, nine, going to be 11 on Sunday, or going to be 10 on Sunday, and then 11. So from six and to 11, all four of them are totally capable of this. So don't use an excuse that my kids are too young and they won't know how to do it. It all comes down to you teaching them. Teaching them to do these things takes time, but down the road it will save you time. Don't you want more time? I do. We can never have enough time, right? Time is money. I want to spend as much time with my kids as I can. So they do their own laundry. They make their own lunches, even my six-year-old. They put their laundry away. They clean up their rooms. They make their own bed. I've now got them doing dishes in the dishwasher. They um, do, I'm teaching them how to use the washing machine and the dryer. Hey, Don. Hey, Scott. Um, I, I'm teaching them how to do all these things because these are life lessons that honestly need to be taught in school. I, they're learning about things that they are never going to use in school. It's crazy. I've always said this. We had cooking class. We did all these great things in high school and they, I don't even know if they do that anymore. You know, like algebra. Who I remember seeing this meme on the internet and it was so funny because it was a teacher that said, you need to learn this math and this algebra because you won't be carrying a calculator around with you for the rest of your life. Now we have iPhones. What do our iPhones have? Our smartphones? We have calculators on us every day, all day. <laughs> so yes, it's important to learn math, but we don't need it to the level that you know, 20, 30 years ago or more that they thought that we were going to need it to. There are things like learning to manage your money and your finances and investing, um, learning how to cook, how to do just everyday things that need to be taught in school. I know I'm going on a rampage, but that's just, you know, I never know what I'm going to talk about in these things. And I just talk about kind of a little bit of everything. So take it and leave it as you will. If you don't like it, stop watching. That's all I got to say. But anyways, so I'm going to finish my leg day and then I'm going to finish my food prep. Before you know it, my children will be home in a couple of hours, but I've accomplished so much today. I'm really, really looking forward to seeing Mary tomorrow and Brandy. Can't wait to see you guys. And uh, I think, I don't know what we're even doing tomorrow. I have a feeling she's going to got, she's got me going, I can't even talk. She's going to have me doing legs every day this week because... That's where I need to focus on for the photo shoot. 
Um, but yeah, I'm so excited about this photo shoot. You guys, I can't wait until the pictures come out and you get to see them and it's just going to be amazing. So I'm going to get back to my squats, my lunges, my deadlifts, my sumo squats, uh, my step ups, and then I'm good. So I've got about, I'm going to pump this out in the next 35 minutes. I know I can do it. So I hope I've motivated you to get moving. Get outside. It is a gorgeous day. Even if you go for a five or a 10 minute walk, do something for you. If you sit down and you take deep breaths, if you're sitting in a chair at an office right now, get up, do some stretches. Don't just sit in your chair all day. Drink lots of water. Put your essential oil in it. Today I have citrus fresh in mine. A little bit later I'll put some sleek in. And then tonight I'll put some thieves and lime in because that's my new favorite blend. Um, Wednesday, I'm so excited because as a silver leader in Young Living, I get to do so, so many amazing things. And I have been invited to my Diamond Leaders office in Brampton. Her name is Sabina DeVita. And I get to go and see her and learn from Kathy, who is the VP in Canada, who came from Calgary. She's now actually stationed in Toronto, which is so exciting for us. Um, so I'm going to get to go and learn and meet them. And um, uh, I mean, I know Sabina, but meet Kathy and um, just learn more. I love learning. I, we're like sponges. We can never learn enough, right? Um, I've had some really amazing conversations with a whole bunch of people this morning. So got to talk to my wifey, Liz. Love her. I got to talk to one of my favorite people in this whole wide world, Debbie Prevaley, and one of her sprucers, Grace. Lovely, lovely lady. I'm so excited for Grace. She's got great things happening. Um, I've been texting with a whole bunch of people. So still need to connect. I don't know, Nina, if you're on here, give me a call, honey. I need to talk to you. Who else do I need to talk to? I got to talk to my brother. Um, been talking to, uh, who else was I talking to? Diane, I've been talking to Diane this morning. I got a whole list. If I don't make a list, I don't know what I'm doing. So Chantel, if you see this, call me and I want to talk to you too. Um, I got a whole bunch of incentives for people on my team this month and uh, it's going to be really exciting. So if they achieve those, we're going to be doing a lot of fun things. Things that include pampering spa days, dinners out, some pretty cool stuff. So anyways, hope you guys are having a great day. Think of five things that you're grateful for. For me, I'm kid free and I'm getting lots of work done. That's number one. Number two, leg day, love leg day. Number three, woke up with tons of energy, feeling healthy, feeling strong, feeling fit with lots of energy. That's number three. Number four, uh, I love these earrings. Swarovski makes me happy. If anybody ever wants to buy me a gift, I love everything in Swarovski store. So I'm just saying that, throwing that out there. <laughs> and number five, I'm grateful for uh, so many things. I'm going to say I'm grateful for my shoes. My shoes because they keep me standing up straight and they support me. And uh, I'm grateful for all you guys. So there's more than five, but... Anyways, it's very easy. Write these things down and every day practice them and hope you're having a good one.